who's really fighting for his cup medal. Could he score the winning goal now? Match of the Day Live comes to West London, where it's ten years since Queen's Park Rangers were beaten in the FA Cup. Master tactician Don Howe will have laid the groundwork for a QPR victory this afternoon. Kenny Dalgleish will have told the Liverpool players precisely what he expects of them here at Loftus Road. The last FA Cup tie Liverpool lost was the 1988 final, and it was a Howe plan that beat them then. Queen's Park Rangers under Don Howe have seen a rejuvenated Kenny Sansom. Ray Wilkins running the game better than ever. And they have a player who on his day can win a match for you, the skillful Roy Wegerly. And still has possession. Yeah. Oh, that's an absolute beauty. But, of course, Liverpool are always a class act. And Beardsley picks it up again. A longer ball this time. Barnes! Yes! Whelan. McMahon. Beardsley. Oh, well played by Beardsley. Lovely goal. Vintage Beardsley. QPR against Liverpool about to begin. And at half-time here, we'll have the action from the day's other quarter-final, Sheffield United against Manchester United. Good afternoon. We're looking forward to this one. I trust you are too. And, of course, we've got the semi-final draw live for you at the end of proceedings here. Now, Jimmy, what are these tactics that uh, Don Howe's going to employ to win this match against Liverpool this afternoon? Well, Nigel Spackman said last night in Match of the Day that since they've employed the sweeper system here at Rangers, they've had this wonderful run of results. And in front of a, a goalkeeper as good as any in the league, a Paul Parker is the perfect man for that sweeper position. He's in excellent form. The advantage it is, is that it enables the man-to-man -man marking players to tackle with confidence, knowing that if they should miss, there's always a man behind to cover up. And also, he reads the through balls coming through the defence. But more than that, in an attacking sense, the fact that any one of those players can break forward, knowing that they're covered if the move breaks down, gives them to freedom to do what Kenny Sanson did so well at the start of the programme there. So it, it's good as an attacking system as well as a defensive one. Of course, uh, tactics alone don't win matches. They don't. They're won by great performances, really, from outstanding players. And we know the Liverpool players only too well who are liable to do that this afternoon. But Roy Wegley is the one that interests me because I've heard him barracked here by the crowd and they've been on their feet at the same time almost. Uh, because he is a player with great pace who is capable of turning any defence. If it's his day, uh, then Rangers could win this match. Right, we'll see what he can do this afternoon. OK, let's take a check on the teams now. And our commentary team this afternoon, Trevor Brooking and John Motson. Thank you very much, Desmond. Well, let's take Rangers first because Don Howe found team selection easy. When you've only lost two of your last 18 games, you tend to keep it the same. That's what he's done. The only fresh information is that Mark Falco is back as a substitute, having missed eight matches with a knee injury. He scored against Liverpool here in the league in November when Rangers won 3-2. Now, on the other hand, Kenny Dalglish had two quite major decisions to make. He's brought Glenn Hussain back at number two, at centre-back after his suspension, and dropped Gary Gillespie to substitute. And he's got Ray Houghton starting now at number eight, which suggests to us that Steve Nicholl, number four, will play at left-back because they've omitted David Burrows. In fact, that was the way Liverpool finished last week's match against Millwall, with Nicholl at left-back and Houghton on the right-hand side of midfield. Well, I've got Trevor Brooking with me, and uh, your thoughts as we approach this sixth-round cup tie. 
Well, I think the selection of Ray Houghton on the right of midfield, then John Barnes wide on the left is very important. Uh, it's a positive selection because really you want the two QPR fullbacks, Kenny Sansom and David Barsley, who both like to get forward in this sweeper system, actually concentrating on the defended side. And if, uh, as I say, Houghton and Barnes can push forward and make sure that they can't get up there to support the Rangers attack, then perhaps Liverpool, you know, can create a few openings themselves. But I think QPR will realise as well that they need to win this home match because I don't think they'd relish the idea of going up to Anfield for a replay. Well, they're playing it in front of an all-ticket crowd. The uh, tight little football theatre here in West London holds 23,500 people. Uh, there'll be something approaching that here today. And 5,600 Liverpool fans are here. Most of them at that left-hand end are waiting the kick-off now. QPR have only been to the semi-finals once before in their history. That was in 1982 when they reached the final. They're aiming for that today. And the master tactician in the spectacles, we're wondering whether he can put one across Liverpool yet again. Or will Liverpool continue this run of 17 unbeaten games, 10 wins and 7 draws? And they are, of course, the holders and the 7-4 favourites for the FA Cup. So it couldn't be set up better on a Sunday afternoon in good weather, Good playing conditions, Liverpool in red, Prince Park Rangers, blue and white hoops, and Liverpool kick off, and Regali's got the ball straight away, but he was surely in the Liverpool half before the ball was actually centred, so we've got a false start. <laughs> And uh, referee gives me a chance to mention him. It's Brian Hill from uh, Kettering who uh, took charge of that final between Liverpool and Wimbledon uh, with one or two interesting incidents which we may have to refer back to. But here's Bardsley for QPR, right back. And straight away the marking system has to be picked up. Maddox, the number six, is going to mark Rush and McDonald, the number five, is going to mark Beardsley, leaving Parker free to sweep. And that was the way they played in the league game when Rangers won 3-2. That was Simon Barker. And Hussein tested for the first time on his return from a one-match ban. It's a good ground for atmosphere, this uh, Loftus Road. It's a football stadium in the truest sense of the word. The crowd very close to the pitch and four seated stands on all on all the sides here's Hansen Whelan for Liverpool looking for Rush and this is Kenny Sansom despite his great experience he's never played in an FA Cup final that was Wegerly with Hussein now it's McMahon now, Nickel at left-back, as we said, wearing number four. And Houghton, number eight here, on the right side of midfield, finds Barnes. And straight away, it was Maddox who came into the challenge. Number six, his job, really, is to look after Ian Rush, and what a sizeable task that is. Parker forward for Rangers. Venison. Houghton. Into Beardsley. Sanson. McMahon, number 11. And here's Barnes. Up against David Bardsley, two former Watford colleagues. And Barnes has tricked his way through. And Seaman didn't hold it, but he did the second time. Good break by Barnes. Swift off the mark into the heart of the Rangers' defence. And uh, it brought a save from David Seaman, which saw the ball bounce back off him, but he got there before Rush. Beardsley. Houghton. And that was Bardsley. He and Barnes played together in the Watford side that reached the cup final in 1984 and the semi-final three years later. Today they're on opposite sides, but on the same side of the pitch. Here's Wegerly. Clark. 
away from Hansen, but there's nobody on that side of the area for Rangers. As Parker's headed to Maddox. Two linesmen today, by the way, Kevin Lynch of Lincoln and Bill Whitehouse of West Bromwich. There goes Beardsley, and Parker, the free man, comes across. Here's Beardsley, Whelan, McDonald. Oh, it was a bad ball by Clark, and it was snapped up by Whelan, who found McMahon. Clark tries to retrieve the error, Nickel. Up against Bardsley. Corner, is it? Yes. Well, Colin Clark really put his side in an awkward situation there with a pass which went astray in his own half of the pitch. So uh, Liverpool have the corner. And Beardsley goes across to help. Oh, look at the space here. McMahon's coming in. And Whelan. Well, Liverpool have come out and really taken the game by the scruff of the neck, haven't they? Uh, QPR hen back in their half and at the moment finding it difficult to get out and set up any attacks themselves. Good start by Liverpool. It came off Glenn Hussain. Well, it's November the 29th, you have to go back to that date for the last Liverpool defeat. That was at Sheffield Wednesday in the league. Since then, as I say, a long unbeaten run. Here's Rush against Maddox, his marker. Houghton. Barnes just touching it on. McMahon. The ball just now into Ian Rush from Hussein is the one you've got to play right into the corners and that takes out the sweep of Paul Parker then. That's a foul, a foul by Venison on Sinton. Just a word in passing from Brian Hill. And uh, Big McDonald, the number five, will go up now. He's the best bet really in the air for QPR as a supporter of the two uh, front men. Although Clark to the right of McDonald may... Uh, Try and come in on this too. And it was Hussein who was marking McDonald. Now Bardsley to Maddox. And uh, Clark was the player who was fouled. McMahon had a word with the referee about the decision, but it's a free kick to Rangers in uh, quite dangerous territory here in fact uh, Danny Maddox now goes forward as well as McDonald Bardsley to float the ball in well taken face of an experienced professional There's another one, Ray Wilkins, back to Parker. Oh, that's a good little ball, regularly. Paul Parker delivered that well, although uh, it's felt that perhaps passing isn't the strongest part of his game, it uh, certainly opened out the plate. And Wegley goes again, it was Nichols' header, Hansen. Bardsley, McDonald's moved up now in open play, he's in the area, so he's Sinton here, didn't quite get that down where he wanted it, he gave too much of it to Venison, Houghton. Oh, that's good play, McMahon, so's that, Barnes, Liverpool really stretching Rangers here, they've got three in the middle waiting, and it's Barnes cross, rush, and somehow scrambled I think by Kenny Sanson at the end, away for a corner.
it was a difficult ball to cope with because Barnes really curled back to the far post away from the goalkeeper and Rush was within, I should think, a foot of sliding it in. Hussain is forward for the corner. Away by Sinton. And that's a, another accurate pass from uh, Nicol to McMahon. Liverpool spraying the ball about with a lot of confidence and plenty of width in this opening period. It's Barnes who finally misplaced it to Wilkins and now the crowd get behind Andy Sinton. The same. Parker. Bardsley. And Clark's pulling away from Hansen, but uh, the Liverpool captain got there anyway. Not sure Alan Hansen quite intended that one, but it looked good anyway. Touch of shirt pulling there, but uh, the referee played an advantage because Liverpool had the ball. It was McDonald on Beardsley. And here's Clark for QPR. Here's Barnes. Rush. Houghton. McMahon to Barnes. Oh, Steve Nicola offside. Offside. But uh, as you said, uh, Trevor, their passing Liverpool in the opening period has been very accurate. Oh, it's been excellent, 10 minutes as a cup tie, and uh, probably the best move of the match was that magnificent uh, move which ended up with John Barnes whipping it across the face of the goal, and Ian Rush, what, probably just a stud length away from uh, putting Liverpool one up. At, at the moment, they are certainly in command. But there's Barnes in the left-back position. That tells you something about Liverpool. And the work that uh, all their players are expected to do. Ray Wilkins making the point uh, yesterday in Grandstand that uh, he hasn't seen or ever experienced a team like Liverpool who work harder at getting the ball back when they lose it. Which uh, isn't all that often, actually. This is Barnes to Beardsley. They lost it there, and it was Wilkins, and it was Barnes who won it back. Nickel. And Seaman comes to catch that. Pressing his claims, David Seaman still for a World Cup place. He's actually in the B squad for uh, the forthcoming match against the Republic of Ireland. Sinton. Well, Houghton is back to help Benison, which will obviously be Liverpool's plan to contain Andy Sinton, the number 11 there. It's a tricky customer. In fact, he played against Liverpool at this stage last year for Brentford before he joined QPR. Here's Wilkins. Paul Parker, the captain. Wilkins to Bardsley. It's Whelan that got the ball away. It's interesting that David Barsley has been told now to move much more in on John Barnes because he was picking the ball up. In fact, by trying to get both fullbacks forward, when it actually broke down, Ray Houghton out on the right and John Barnes were getting a lot of space and they're trying to now make sure the fullbacks are very conscious of them defensively rather than getting forward too much. It's Danny Maddox. Flicked on 
by Clark initially. Rangers throw. Wegley on the right hand side there, marked by Hansen. Goal kick. Well, the QPR fans have been looking forward to this tie ever since they got through against Blackpool in the last round because their cup run so far has been littered with replays. They went to Cardiff and drew and won here. They went to Highbury and drew and beat Arsenal here. And then after drawing at Blackpool, they played twice here at Loftus Road before finally dismissing the third division side. Here's Nickel for Liverpool. We've had a couple of replays themselves against uh, Swansea and Norwich. Hansen. Barnes. Good movement. Rush. In by Nickel. Offside flag up against Rush. The main problem QPR have as well is Steve Nicol because uh, Andy Sinton plays on the left and really blocks down Venison. And then, of course, you've got Han Hansen and Hussein who are marking the two strikers. And really, Steve Nicol is the spare man. And by him pushing forward, he's given them all sorts of problems down that right-hand side. This is Wegerly. And now it's Wilkins. Andy Sinton's gone to the right now. Fifteen minutes gone, no score. Wilkins for Rangers, leaving it for Parker. Kenny Sansom, Clark, and he couldn't find Wegerly. And uh, Liverpool immediately turned defence into attack with Ray Houghton. As it happens, Andy Sinton is going to stay over on the right. Don Howe's decided that uh, Stevie Nicol was causing too many problems. Now, really, it's up to Liverpool to get Barry Venison in on the right-hand side. This is Clark. Yes, it's definitely a tactical switch there, as you say. Andy Sinton's gone from left wing to right wing. This is uh, Barnes for Liverpool. And he is following Nicol as Nicol starts to move forward. I think uh, you spotted that at exactly the same time as Don Howe, Trevor. And... Uh, <laughs> There's Andy Sinton. Simon Barker. And here's Bardsley, just touching it off, trying to find Sinton. In fact, the ball was out of play. Liverpool and their supporters quite used to being drawn away in the FA Cup. It's the 11th time in 13 rounds that they've had to travel. Beardsley back to Houghton. And he's looking for Rush. This is Barry Venison. Barnes is there, trying to find McMahon. Stretching player was Barker. Venison to Rush. Good challenge that by Danny Maddox, it really was. It gave Barker the chance to find Clark, but he showed too much of the ball to Hussein. Barker again, Wilkins. Sinton, Bardsley, long ball from Hussein, McDonald gets to it first ahead of Beardsley and that's a foul by Barker on McMahon, don't think the free kick was taken from quite the right place but Brian Hill's quite happy as uh, Hawkins runs Barnes. Well, the Rangers crowd really giving it uh, a go today. They're getting behind their side every time they move forward, as you might expect. With memories of a victory here already by uh, three goals to two this season over Liverpool. And indeed, uh, 
in the League Cup semi-finals the last time these two teams locked horns in a cup competition four years ago Rangers put Liverpool out in the uh, I think it was the Milk Cup then here's Venison Houghton looking for Rush, a test here for Maddox. He got the tackle in. He got the ball away too. It's given Ray Wilkins time to size up the situation and find Wegerly. Barker. Sinton back to Wilkins Kenny Sansom's made a forward but on this side of the field this is Barker and Wegel is uh, over on the right at the moment Bardsley curls it in and uh, Beardsley finds Houghton and there was a late challenge Simon Barker on Peter Beardsley nil-nil-nil and uh, I would say apart from the cross from Barnes that Rush nearly reached no clear-cut scoring chances yet but there might be here this is Barnes defending well Cupio one or two gaps just opening up but they're always with that spare man just got somebody coming across Danny Maddox has started very well like one or two gaps and also kept a tight rein on Ian Rush but at the moment still finding it difficult to get those men forward to really worry the Liverpool defence forward by Nicol and there again Maddox with Rush what a feeling that's going to be one of the key contests in this game Danny Maddox has started very well against him but with Rush you have to be uh, alert for 90 minutes there's no question about that one chance will do for him. This is Parker. Beardsley pulling of the shirt really there Houghton on uh, Sanson So settled down now into a clearly defined pattern. It's the Rangers sweeper system, as we said at the start, against the uh, talented Liverpool attack. And Liverpool in defence at the moment, completely undisturbed. This is Venison. But Prince Park Rangers haven't been a prolific scoring team this season. Their top scorers have only got six goals each as opposed to Liverpool who've got Rush on 19, Barnes on 17 and Beardsley on 15 which uh, must mean something I suppose, here's Barnes now I think he may have trod on the linesman's foot there but uh, <laughs> Mr Whitehouse didn't seem too uh, disturbed by it Houghton. Now Whelan got away from Wilkins in midfield there and brought the save out of uh, David Seaman.
let's say the luminous yellow jackets now on the uh, police and stewards in the crowd have become a really regular and recognisable part of uh, English football stadiums and we all know why and uh, certainly it um, must be a sign of great reassurance to people in terms of safety Here's uh, Parker and Maddox. Clark, Barker, took that down beautifully, Simon Barker. He uh, had a spell in the England under 21 side when he was with Blackburn Rovers, Simon Barker, and he's a midfield player with plenty of stamina as well, Trevor. He gets forward well. At the moment, uh, he and Ray Wilkins are having to concentrate a lot on defence, but that tactic uh, in the league match here when QPR won 3-2, that ball in that time to Colin Clark on, on the league game, it was Mark Balco who called him a lot of problems in the air, and uh, that's one perhaps QPR could adopt, because they did bring them success in the league match, as I say, when they won 3-2. Yeah. So we've been playing for 25 minutes, it's 0-0 uh, here at Loftus Road. Hussain didn't quite make that, Wegerly tried to, Sinton, great challenge by Ronnie Whelan, putting off as he was about to shoot and in fact got his foot to the ball and conceded the corner. Whelan saving what might well have been the opening goal for Rangers. Sinton will take the corner, McDonald will come to the near post with Clark, Maddox is there as well, Clark's there, oh, over the top. Was it, uh, was Grobelar fouled? Well, he got up well anyway. Clark uh, got the header in. But earlier than that, Ronnie Whelan will take some credit for how quickly he got to Andy Sinton in that scoring position. First true threat from Queen's Park Rangers. attack now, Beardsley again both the half opportunities came from balls played up into the air and that's something I think QPR had got to think about to his left but Kenny Sanson hasn't come forward but it's still a decent cross by Barker Clark is there so too is Steve Nickel covering in the centre well that pep things up a bit that uh, little spell from Rangers as Whelan again it's, it is quite noticeable how many times Whelan in defensive positions as a midfield player gets back to uh, save the situation but now here are Rangers again with Clark looking for Wegerly what do you make of Wegerly Trevor uh, Desmond was making the point uh, earlier that um, sometimes talking about it with Jimmy that uh, he's a star man on one day and can be frustrating on another well he loves a dribble and uh, you know whenever you take people on defenders if you get keep getting caught in possession uh, then the crowd will get a bit frustrated there's Brian Hill into a bit of trouble, but uh, Paul Parker asked, asking if he's OK. Didn't see what happened to him, but uh, looks like an ankle of some sort. Brian actually took charge of that uh, final against Wimbledon. He's uh, a referee who likes to uh, keep a smile on his face. He's getting attention from... Uh, getting attention from uh, Roy Evans of Liverpool as the Rangers substitutes watch but he's all right in fact he is limping a bit Brian Hill and offside against John Barnes and uh, if he has to go off then the senior linesman will have to take over that would be uh, Kevin Lynch from Lincoln who's on the near side of the pitch at the moment and uh, it was something uh, by a strange irony that we were discussing in the referees room before the game what the procedure when the ref has to go off because it happened in a match just last week. Here's Wegerly. Sanson. 
Clark, Barker, Sinton coming in and Grobola and Ray Wilkins. Oh, it's a goal! Ray Wilkins for Queen's Park Rangers and Grobola has to take the blame. And the London side in front, the holders behind, and it came from a man who they used to say never gets forward. Grobola tried to do it with one hand, made a mess of it, and a left foot volley by Wilkins right in the top corner. There's the face of a man who knows that he's to blame. Wilkins, who scored against Arsenal last week, now puts Rangers in front in the cup tie after 29 minutes, and the referee now is the centre of attention because he has got an injury, and I have a feeling that Brian Hill may have to retire. The senior linesman has gone across, Kevin Lynch, but here's what happened at this very exciting time in the match. Barker's cross, Sinton's the player coming in first, Grobelar palms it, doesn't get there, and Wilkins smashes it, possibly off the head of Nickel, but it's a goal to Rangers, Wilkins will claim it, and there's a conference on the far side while you're watching this again, regarding the referee and the linesman, because Brian Hill is having to leave the field, and as Rangers take the lead, we wait for a change of referee. Now, what will happen is that uh, Kevin Lynch from Lincoln, the mustachioed official, will take the middle. The other linesman, Bill Whitehouse from West Bromwich, will stay where he is. And the reserve official, Alan Mitchell of Kings Langley in Hertfordshire, is coming across to our side of the field. That's the reorganisation there, Sir Alan Mitchell. That's the reorganisation of officials and... Uh, I really feel I put the hoodoo on Brian Hill by asking him before the game what would happen there, but uh, he's had to go off. And more important, perhaps, from the football point of view, the holders are a goal behind. And what a good volley it was, which uh, Trevor may want to mention in a moment. Let's see if Liverpool can strike straight back. Nickel. Well, there were two or three good, really, involvements. First of all, the ball to Colin Clark, which he did well to head back. Simon Barker once again joining. Good little bit of skill to get the cross in. But, of course, uh, Bruce Grovelo will know that uh, he could have really pushed it away, but certainly not try and caught it one-handed. Ray Wilkins pounced very quick, hit it with his left foot. Not his favourite footer, though. He is a good two-footed player, and he's taken the lead for QPR. The uh, reason the referee had to go off, by the way, Brian Hill, he sustained a knock on the shin in an accidental collision with Colin Clark at Queen's Park Rangers. Well, that's really opened up this sixth round cup tie, and possibly from a neutral's point of view, it was the best thing that could have happened, because Liverpool now have to come out and uh, find a way back. All that time that Ray Wilkins spent in his career, Don Howes encouraged him to forage forward when he can. All that time he spent as a holding midfield player. And uh, since he's joined Rangers, he's been up there a great deal of the time. Here's Bardsley. McMahon. Whelan finds Barry Venison. Five up for Liverpool, waiting for a cross. Rush tries to find Beardsley. Now Wilkins in defence. He's such an influence on this Rangers team. Foul. Hansen holding regularly. Oh, it's gone the other way. I would have said Hansen was holding regularly's shirt, but still. Here's McMahon. Barnes up against Bardsley Barnes cross rush just glanced his forehead Houghton Venison and Wilkins is there again it's a foul Bardsley on Barnes Liverpool Noticeably moving up a gear, having been uh, taken aback by that Rangers strike. 
but there were plenty of goals in the league game and there may be more to come today Barnes got two that day by the way and he's uh, lining up a free kick here about uh, 25 yards out McMahon is there too and McMahon strikes it well over talking of striking the ball Trevor you were mentioning Ray Wilkins there really a volley from that position some players possibly would have uh, skied that one but he really hit it true didn't he he hit it well, but it's one of those you don't want to try and break the net because it's sort of knee height and it's easy just to get underneath it and blast it into the crowd. But he, it was a controlled volley, just clear the two defenders who were scampering back trying to block it on the line. Here's Beardsley. Barnes. Houghton. Tries to find Barnes again. They'll have to hurry here, Rangers, because Venison's up with the attack as well. Sansom. But what an opportunity now for QPR to capitalise on that. Here's Whelan. But these few minutes are vital for them. Barnes. is Hansen. Barnes is switched to the right for a moment and Kenny Sanson has fouled him. And uh, it's going to be a free kick to Liverpool. Glenn Hussain has made his way to the far side of the penalty area to come in behind the others. Venison's also trotting forward now. Well, that won't find anybody. And just for a moment, Trevor, QPR have the advantage. Well, Liverpool lost their fluency a bit, didn't they, when uh, Don Howe switched into definitely to the right wing to block Stevie Nicol. And although Barry Venison now is the free man at right back, they haven't made as good a use to him as a free attacking ploy as they did when Steve Nicholl was there. So at the moment, a little bit rattled, 1-0 down, lost their fluency and must just try and settle down, get their possession going, game going again, and try and knock some better service into Rush and Beersley, which has just sort of waned a little bit the last five or ten minutes. I'm just trying to think, uh, I think from memory, it's the first time in the FA Cup this season that Liverpool have been a goal behind, and it's going to be most interesting to see what effect that has on the game. Barnes is having a very much a roving commission today. He's been on the left, on the right, down the middle. Here's McMahon, good challenge by Parker. And wiggle has gone to the left, Clark to the right. Simon Barker, who's cross-produced that goal. Now Clark. And Paul Parker, the sweeper, is in the penalty area. Furthest forward for Rangers. If they can get the ball in. It's still Clark. Queen's Park Rangers 1, Liverpool 0 in the 6th round of the FA Cup. Nickel, Beardsley. Just in case anybody is coming in on a pleasant Sunday afternoon having missed the first half hour, Ray Wilkins the scorer. And there he is again in attack. Pressing Glenn Hussain, it's a foul. It's a free kick to Liverpool, a foul came before the handball. No hard feelings. Seven minutes left in the first half, as uh, Rangers with their tails up, working hard with Kenny Sansom on the ball. Good pass to Wiggily. And another good one too to Wilkins. Now Barker is slick back. And Neat. Believe it, 
Barnes now on the right wing. Beardsley, in fact, has gone across right on the left at the moment as they try to find ways of upsetting this carefully organised QPR defensive system. Free kick to Liverpool. Hussain has made his way forward. This is Venison. Barnes. It's a dangerous turn. And Maddox got in with the challenge. Barnes facing the kicker, rush in the six-yard box. Hussain waiting to come in. There's Barnes. Clark heads it out. Back in by Houghton. Whelan shot and was a player offside. QPR, as I said, defending well. When you play the sweeper system and sometimes you hem back, uh, there's going to be occasions where you, know, you have to let the opposition knock it around as Liverpool do so well. But when it gets into that penalty area, they've always just get in that toe end in and the foot in. What's important now is to make sure they don't concede an equaliser and go in at half-time still leading 1-0. Yes, the incentive certainly there now for the West London club. Wilkins has given them a wonderful platform here. Largely to Barker. Largely's cross. Clark as it go to Wegerly. Here's Clark. Now it's Kenny Sanson. Wegerly back to Wilkins. Sinton. And Houghton to McMahon. Now there's a break on for Liverpool. Three up with him. Beardsley going down the inside left channel. Bardsley the defender. Very assured as indeed has been uh, much of Rangers play, especially since they took the lead. Four minutes left in the half. Rangers one, Liverpool nil. Houghton. Here's Venison now for Liverpool. And off McDonald for a corner. So let's just uh, see what's going to happen from this corner. Well, Liverpool haven't made the most of their corners, there's no question about that. Sinton to Wegerly. Foul by Venison. Referee who took over, Kevin Lynch. We have a score on the referee, he's not a linesman of course, he's got all the full qualifications and he books Barry Venison for that trip on Roy Wegerly. That's the first caution of the afternoon, Trevor. Well, Roy Wegerly's close skill invites defenders to make tackles like that and if he does just toe-end the ball past you and you're late with your tackle, you always got the chance of getting booked. Uh, probably a little bit unlucky but uh, he's got his name in the notebook anyway. Sanson takes the free kick for Rangers. McMahon. Sinton. Well, Nickel was uh, a few yards behind him there, and Wegel is in the centre. McMahon won it, Barker tackled him. Play on, Hussein. Now, can Liverpool pull their way round before half-time? This is Barnes. Houghton. Rangers again shaping up in defence in tidy fashion. But Rush has shaken off Danny Maddox. That could be vital. Houghton. What are your thoughts, then, on the first half generally, Trevor? Well, Liverpool started very well and uh, took a grip. And then QPR certainly by switching Sinton to block Nikol off, uh, came more and more into the game, had a good spell when they played three or four longer balls into Colin Clark, and one of them brought a bit of fruition, 
Bruce Grobler couldn't deal with the cross and uh, Ray Wilkins tucked it in with his left foot. Uh, seemed to remember him scoring, was it, against Brighton in a cup final? He curled one in with his left foot. Might, might be something about the FA Cup. It encourages him to use that left peg of his. Well, uh, you're speaking as a man who's scored in a cup final, so you should know. In fact, uh, I was going to mention the hat-trick Trevor scored for his Sunday team today, but uh, <laughs> I think Billy Bonds has turned things around at West Ham now. They don't need you anymore. <laughs> Venison forward, looking for Rush. Here's Ray Houghton. Barnes. Oh, space for McMahon. And for Whelan. And for offside. Beardsley. And Ronnie Whelan has said something to the referee, Mr Lynch. And he's being called across. A little bit of uh, anxiety creeping into Liverpool's play, perhaps, and into their uh, feelings approaching half-time. Kenny Dalglish's side, 1-0 down. look as though they will finish this first half on a high note there haven't been many chances Wilkins took the one that came his way we're in the last minute of the half and Danny Maddox is forward for the free kick so is McDonald as Clark challenges Grobelar and leaves him off the field of play we're into stoppage time Here's Barnes. Good pass for Houghton. Rush waiting in the centre. And Simon Barker aware of the danger. Well, Rangers have stuck to Don Howe's carefully arranged shape and policy, and it's paid off for them in this first half. No question about that. And they finish it to a great roar from the Loftus Road crowd because the London club, thanks to Ray Wilkins, go off a goal in the lead. The uh, deputy referee there, Mr Lynch, having a word with Paul Parker. Bruce Grobelar goes off disappointed. But at half-time, a smile on the face of Ray Wilkins, a frown perhaps on the face of the FA Cup holders. It's Queen's Park Rangers 1, Liverpool 0. Well, Liverpool certainly knocked out of their stride by that goal. What did you make of that first half, Jim? Well, it was an interesting one. As Trevor pointed out, uh, the tactical battle was won by Don Howe because Nickel was getting forward on the left and causing problems, and he immediately stopped that by bringing Stinton over. I mean, the counter to that in the next half would be to bring Saunton on at left back and, and Nickel at right back because both are adventurous and it might give them the space they need. Rangers have done so well, you know, with that tactical side of it. But uh, really, Liverpool haven't really functioned. The only one who's made uh, us think that they might score a goal is Barnes. Uh, Beardsley, when he's not functioning and sparking at his best, then Liverpool are half the side for me, and, uh, and I feel that at the moment. OK, Jim, thanks very much. We'll look in some detail at some of those incidents in a few minutes. But, uh, of course, there's another quarter-final tie that's been taking place today. Sheffield United against Manchester United. Let's show you precisely what happened now. Commentating, Gerald Sinstad. Even Senna. Todd. Right short of Todd. Sheffield's free kick, and Ince would do well not to express an opinion. He's a volatile character ball in, so much talent with his feet. And too ready with his tongue sometimes. Nice little flick on, and it was...
was just too high for Whitehouse. And Garner at the near post. The perfect flick on. You rehearse those time and time again on the training ground. And you hope for one or two to come off. That was beautifully done, but it just flew inches too high for Whitehouse. Bruce just saved it from going for the corner. Agana near post, Dean at the far. And Booker coming in too, but Pallister was above the ball. Bruce's header, and then Ince, and now Wallace. Brave header by Gannon, and there may be some profit from it. Whitehouse! It was asking for it, and Agana couldn't give it. Whitehouse did some good work here. He dummied the shot, then played it. And how much did Agana miss by? A couple of inches, not more. Dane Whitehouse scored a goal at Bradford last Saturday that was his first for Sheffield United. Hughes to Wallace. Oh, he's got a bit of room. Hill has gone to cover him. Bradshaw behind Hill. And Wallace has beaten them both with ease. And Tracy got down as McClare got a knee to the ball, it looked. But Wallace there just dismissed Hill and Bradshaw. Gone. And now, as time to look, came off Booker, then off McClare, and Tracy smothered it. But there's the real threat. Forward by Hughes and Robbins is onside. Can he pull it back? Corner. I thought it went out for a goal kick. So did Stancliffe, uh, so did uh, Tracy. And so did a lot of the Sheffield United fans behind that goal. Wallace. Good back header. McClare. McClare against the bar. And then McClare on the rebound from the corner. And so they will be wanting to know, was that really a corner or was it a goal kick? Let's have a look at the goal itself. McClare's header and then his left foot. And that's his third goal in four games. And we'll just have another look at this. And did the whole of the ball cross the line or not? Hughes now for McClare. Robbins in the middle, Wallace on this side. Hughes going in, Ince going in. Four there if McClare can cross. Hughes, the one-two and offside. McClare was allowed to run by the Sheffield United back four and was pretty clearly offside. Ten men behind the ball for Manchester United. Pallister for McClare. Duxbury racing ahead of him. Good pass into his stride. Three to cross to. This is Hughes. Sheffield United were a bit stretched for defenders. And that has left Wallace in the clear. The shot, I think, was going wide anyway. Martin. Hughes. Duxbury. Again, Wallace unmarked, but offside. Cross comes right through to Wallace, but he was offside. Alex Ferguson, who's come down to the bench in this second half, has been 
on his feet more than he's been sitting down. Expostulating, gesticulating. Wallace. Looks like he's heading for goal and he tried to float a bender. Didn't work for him. Good idea. He wants to go for goal, Danny Wallace. Alistair beaten that time by Dean. It's fallen for a Garner. And again, and this time Leighton saves. But really, a Garner should have done better than that. That was a Garner's first shot. The second one with his left foot was very well saved by Leighton, to his credit. It's time for the long ball now, no matter what side you are. One down in a cup tie and a minute and a bit to go. Dean. Control pass in for Todd. Todd the pull back. That was a good save. It really was needed then. And he plucked that right off Bob Booker's eyebrows. Good work by Todd and Booker. I think could see the net shimmering. The final whistle, Manchester United have beaten Sheffield United by a first half goal from Brian McClare. They will be one of the last four in the FA Cup this season. People have been saying to me Manchester United's name is on the cup this season. Have you been feeling that? No, I, I, I think that's a trap to fall, you can fall into. I think you've got to earn your right to, for to win any cup, but I do think you need a little slice of luck. Um, any time I've won anything, that I've always looked back on an occasion where I said, well, we'd have a bit luck today. And I just hope we get some luck in the semi-final. <laughs> Four straight away wins for Manchester United. They've certainly earned their place to be in that semi-final draw, which we'll have live later on. Uh, here, of course, Queen's Park Rangers leading Liverpool by that goal to nil. Let's take a look at the goal, Jimmy. Yes, it was a superb good cross, goal. Good goal. Looking forward to seeing it again. We have to say, really. Well, yes, but it was good how hard uh, Simon Barker had to work, one, to get to the ball, and then how hard he had to work on the cross to make sure, after the dummy, that he got up in the air and made Grobola struggle. Because he was struggling, but it's that one-handed habit of his which turned round and bit him, and a beautiful volley at the end of it. You see... He didn't work quite as hard on the cross coming over as Barker worked to get the ball right over to the far post. There he is. See, if he'd gone at that with two hands, which he could have done, he'd have fallen on his back and it might have hurt, but two hands are definitely better than one in that situation. But we've seen Bruce get away with that year after year. Ball drops on the floor and he's on to it first. Wilkins took so, it beautifully, mind you, having, uh, had, oh yeah. had been, having been given the chance. Yeah, that, you see that lovely work by Barker. Now the volley. Medium pace left foot volley, as Trevor says. Uh, anybody would be proud of that uh, in, in, at any level of football. Well, it certainly shook Liverpool up, because up till yeah. then they had looked the business. Um, but I suppose most of the chances have really cut, have been made by Barnes, and we've got a couple of examples of them. One early on in the match. Yes, that was um, one, almost as if Rush arrived too early. It was a strange thing. He sort of stumbled. He was in there as the balls flicked over. He gets there, but look just can't make contact with the ball. He was ready for it, but somehow couldn't get his foot on the end of it. Yeah. And this time, from this cross, which uh, he ends up heading, just a little bit of dummy in coming in now, he seems to be in the air too soon, up and then hanging too early for the ball to make the right contact, or for him to make the right contact with the ball. But in the right place, but not just able to finish. I suppose they were the only two chances they really had uh, in that first half, despite sort of dominating the first 20 minutes, probably. Yes, and that was why, while Nickel was giving Barnes that support on the left-hand side of the field. Once they stopped that supply line to him and got, lost the extra man, then he was bottled up. So. Yeah. Well, they're in trouble now, aren't they, Liverpool, really? They're struggling. Uh, they're struggling for me because Beardsley is not clicking. And, and I would make that change. I'd bring Saunton on and put Nickel to right back and try and get through from that position. Mm -hmm. Well, we've got a, certainly an excellent uh, second half to look forward to. So let's rejoin Trevor and John Monson.
yes, uh, Trevor alongside me goes along with Jimmy on that and expects uh, half expects to see Staunton come on uh, at left back and Nichols switch to the right. But that hasn't happened at the start of the half because although Gillespie and uh, Staunton have both been stretching and still are, Kenny Dalgleish has actually kept it the same at the kickoff. Um, so we'll wait and see. Um, those people are happy enough, aren't they, down here in West London? Their team are leading by one goal to nil against the FA Cup holders, thanks to this man here, 33 years old. He's seen service with some great clubs. Manchester United already through to the semi-final. Ray might be forgiven for something to think about, meeting them in the semis or in the final. But being the professional he is, he knows he's a good 45 minutes away from that. And uh, so indeed are Queen's Park Rangers. There's no way you can take anything for granted against Liverpool. And uh, he'll have had a hard few words to say, I'm sure, in the dressing room. And so would Ronnie Moran. Here's Clark. Wilkins. McDonald. We've got the official attendance, by the way, here this afternoon. It's just over 21,000. It's not quite capacity, partly because there was one uh, area of the ground left deliberately free for segregation and safety reasons. But uh, looking around Loftus Road, which is, as I say, a very tight stadium, it's uh, well packed and it's a good atmosphere. As you can hear, Hansen, Beardsley, Barnes, rushes coming towards the near post. Just the last couple of times John Barnes has got the ball, it's been Paul Parker that's closed him down, uh, Trevor. Well, occasionally where Barnsley just caught that little bit forward, uh, Paul Parker very conscious that side that Barnes is the danger, because pitch is starting to dry out a little bit, and, and now and again when you're in those wide positions and trying to whip in a, a, a fast cross, it'll just bobble at the wrong time and shit into the high into the crowd, it looks terrible, but it's, it's only just that la late bubble that you can't adjust to. I think there may have been a slight change in the Liverpool tactical system. It, it threatened to happen in the first half a bit. Beardsley has come back almost into a left-sided position, which is why Bardsley for the moment is marking him and Barnes is much more central. There were signs of that in the first half as well, of course. He is definitely playing up front with the in rush. It's a tactic, actually, they played here in the league game and it did get them back into the match. So, a switch by Kenny Dalgleish. It's very much a tactical battle between the two coaches. Here's Sansom. And at the moment, Parker is marking Barnes and McDonald is the free player at the uh, back in the Rangers' defensive system. So, plenty of thoughts going into it. But, uh, one wonders whether Rangers can uh, either hold on here or even improve their position, or whether Liverpool can keep their hold on the FA Cup. Here's McMahon to Whelan. Barnes and Wilkins, whose influence will be of even greater importance, in a sense, in the second half, and it was when he scored, because it's his job to make sure Rangers keep their shape in the middle of the field and don't let Liverpool take over the game. Kenny Sansom too, in that sense, player with a lot to offer, having been in uh, big matches like this so frequently in the past. Mostly uh, with Arsenal, of course. Barker. in this match as they were against uh, Southampton and Norwich in the earlier rounds that I saw. Maybe a compliment that to Barker and Wilkins, who are the two central midfield players for QPR. Bottled the game up a little bit there. That's Hussain climbing on Clark. Free kick to Rangers.
McDonald's made his way forward. McDonald! Oof. Corner. He's off the Liverpool head. And it was swinging in viciously. So Andy Sinton will take the corner. David Bardsley has made his way forward this time into a near post position. McDonald and Maddox coming from deep. There's McDonald. Clark couldn't turn it in. Bardsley, he couldn't either. Corner. QPR finding some space in the Liverpool penalty area. Not quite enough, perhaps, for the shot that would have counted, but it's a corner again. Maddox, deflected by Hussain, corner number three. Andy Sinton's got a long way to go because he takes them on both sides. But he's delivering the ball quite precisely into that uh, crowded area, just where Rangers want it. And McDonald has now gone nearer to the kicker. Wegerly on the goal line. And it came off John Barnes, did it, or was he pushed? He was pushed by Colin Clark. And that little flurry might uh, just have brought the second goal at one point, Trevor. A oh, good spell of pressure, and I think Liverpool thankful again for Ronnie Whelan. He won, made one great tackle in the first half, and there again it was him who, who blocked those two right in the middle of the goal mouth scramble. This is Nickel, and uh, Parker is covering. Wegerly, Wilkins, Whelan in the way again. McMahon, and now Houghton. And it was Barker who came back. Over five minutes gone in the second half. QPR 1, Liverpool 0. Playing for a place in the FA Cup semi-final. To join, so far, Crystal Palace and Manchester United. Here's Barker. Rangers really have gone about their business here in a very workmanlike, assured manner. Says a lot for the uh, careful way that Don Howe prepares his team for every match, especially the big one-off games. McDonald's in the thick of it again. The flag's up now on the far side. And we're going to have the substitution, uh, or, or a substitution for Liverpool. It's not quite the one that uh, the boys were predicting because it looks to me as though Gary Gillespie may be waiting to come on. Certainly, Barry Venison is the man who goes off. That was what was suggested. And Gillespie comes on in his place. Scored the winning goal against Millwall last week after a long spell out with injury. And he's gone into the right-back position, it would seem, Trevor. Well, I do find that surprising because uh, Steve Saunton, who's the other substitute, is a really good attacking fullback. Could easily have played him at left and Steve Nicol at right back. Gary Gillespie really usually a centre back and uh, not really happy I wouldn't have thought playing right back. Perhaps they're just going to encourage him to go up and use his height though at set pieces. Here's Ray Houghton. Oh, well played by Simon Barker. He's having some match in midfield for Rangers. He's all over the pitch. free kick for dangerous play so here is a chance perhaps for Gillespie to lend his height to the Liverpool force as Hussein goes up with him that was Barker here comes Whelan Wegerly Alan Hansen the only man back in the Liverpool half the others staying forward as he pumps it up looking for Rush that's McDonald Hussein, Wilkins jumped 
rather into Hussein there, according to the referee. That's a free kick to Liverpool. And there's danger momentarily here for QPR. Liverpool are beginning to threaten with their fans packed behind the goal that they're attacking. John Barnes will take the kick. There's a wall of four with a Liverpool player joining it at either end. And uh, Mr Lynch wants them further back. Right on the line, I suspect. And Barnes. Oh, brilliant! What a great free kick by John Barnes. David Seaman got a hand to it, I think. But he couldn't keep it out, and Liverpool have equalised. And this was a John Barnes special. Seaman off to his right, he did get both hands possibly to it, but the ball was curling away from him into the roof of the net, and it's 1-1 after 55 minutes. And Barnes, a little landmark for him, that's his 18th goal of the season, and that's his best ever total in his professional career. He needed just one to reach that figure, and we couldn't have asked for a better one, and neither could Kenny Dalglish, because what's uh, really concerned him and Liverpool is that that puts them right bang back into this cup match. You can hear their supporters now celebrating that vintage Barnes goal. Well, I would imagine Ray Wilkins will regret giving away that free kick now. Here's Whelan. So the holders are back on terms. The face of the game has changed. Here's Gary Gillespie. And now it's Ranger's character that comes under the microscope. What did you make of it, Trevor? Well, I thought it was a magnificent free kick, but uh, I think David Seaman will be a bit disappointed. When you see John Barnes taking a free kick and you're a goalkeeper here, he's got that ability to put it either side. That's the problem. Here's Houghton. Liverpool going for the jugular now. That was McDonald on his knees. Here's Parker. Gillespie. The flag is up for offside. Yeah, when you hit a free kick like that, I mean, the wall was lined up to encourage him to hit it in that side. Here's Beardsley against Maddox, and Rangers just losing the place for a few minutes. Rush. And it needs the experienced players now like Wilkins to get hold of the game again it's just sufficient lull now just to finish that point I think John but uh, yeah, what happened he, he encouraged him to hit it that side but because he's got that ability to actually lift them over the wall into the other corner David Seaman sort of near enough in the middle of the goal rather than being the side in fact that the shot ended up in and although he got his hand to it he couldn't keep out the power but I think he'd be a bit disappointed Mind you, you often think uh, if that goal had been scored by a Brazilian, they'd be showing it for the rest of the week, wouldn't they, on television? Anyway, it's one all here at Loftus Road, and QPR are back on the attack. They've sent uh, McDonald and Maddox forward for the free kick. Wilkins and Samson close to the ball. Uh, flags up, presumably climbing by McDonald on Hussein. Well, you wouldn't say it was an inspired substitution because it didn't have much to do with the way the goal was scored, but it did come just a couple of minutes after Gary Gillespie came on. And that's uh, Nicol to Beardsley. Two to beat. Bardsley. again clever Houghton far post well taken by Seaman Barnes is having an inspired spell
things going much more Liverpool's way now. Got more of a grip on the game. Here's Whelan. Uh, true cup tie spirit reverberating around the ground we've been playing for an hour Queen's Park Rangers 1 Liverpool 1 and as I said earlier both teams have been heavily involved in drawn matches and replays in this competition there might be another one you never know this is Barnes and if there was then you'd obviously have to fancy the holders back at Anfield so QPR must turn up the volume a little bit here now try and get back in front was fouled Liverpool fans in good heart since that equaliser the Gillespie with the free kick played in low to Barnes and Seaman had to adjust his position because it span off a Rangers player the best of kicks but uh, Kenny Sansom helped it on if you were Don how Trevor how soon would you start uh, thinking about the possibility of Mark Falco I think you you can see that Liverpool have gained the initiative so I think uh, he'll give it another few minutes but uh, it has to be an option that he, he's got to consider because uh, they wouldn't relish as I said earlier going up to Anfield and I think uh, it does need a change because they have just got their chins down a bit at the moment here's Wegerly Wegerly and Clark haven't been in uh, Many scoring positions in the course of the match, the two strikers. Not entirely their fault, that, of course. It depends partly on uh, what's coming through from behind. Well, the referee, Mr Lynch, didn't expect to be in the middle this afternoon. For anybody who's joined the match late, Brian Hill of Kettering, the uh, former cup final referee, went off injured in the first half. Here's Wegerly. Free kick to Rangers. And uh, Kevin Lynch from Lincoln took over in the centre, senior linesman. Robillard organising the people in front of him. McDonald coming in from the far side onto Bardsley's kick. This is Wilkins, but it was Rush first. Back foraging for Liverpool, finding Houghton. Beardsley. Two England players tangling, Barnes and Parker. Wegerly, that's Clark. Oh, that was the best little combination between the two that we've seen, but a linesman's flag was up anyway on the far side, so an offside would have ruled out any possible goal. a good looking ball and Brobola was in the right place to cut it out and here's Gary Gillespie who uh, came on at right back in place of Venison has played there for Scotland actually uh, Gillespie this is Whelan and McMahon in a central position Bear in mind that the semi-final draw comes up at the end of the programme, live from Lancaster Gate. I was saying that uh, Crystal Palace and Manchester United were already through. And uh, 
as Whelan tries to tidy this up for Liverpool. He only finds Bardsley. Barker. Rush. Now it can go right. Winners of this tie to join them, and of course the winners of the Oldham Aston Villa sixth round match, which has yet to be played and will take place on Wednesday night at Oldham. That's the way the cup looks at the moment. It's very tight here. 20 minutes gone in the second half. It's Queen's Park Rangers 1, Liverpool 1. Wilkins for Rangers, Barnes here, the scorer for Liverpool. Looks for Houghton. Oh, just a little bit of a lull the last few minutes. Uh, QPR just reshaping the troops, so to speak, after conceding that equaliser. And really, you know, they'd be bitterly disappointed because with the sweep assist and getting that 1-0 up there, they would have been hoping, I'm sure, that uh, that might have seen, been enough to see them through to that semi-final. But uh, as it is now, QPR's two substitutes are having a little trot, so perhaps Don Howe is thinking of bringing on and making that change. Yes, the other sub is a defender, Justin Channing, so if we do see a QPR switch, I think it'll be Falco. Um, in the meantime, here's Houghton to Gillespie for Liverpool. And Parker across to meet Barnes. That's really represented a big change in the system. Parker's had to mark Barnes because he's gone far more central once the match got underway, and uh, Maddox is still picking up Rush. McDonald is free for the most part, and uh, Bardsley is marking Beardsley. Bit of a tongue twister, that. There goes Wilkins. Hansen across. Staunton also has been uh, stretching as though Kenny Dalglish may be thinking about bringing him on still. Here's Barker for Rangers. Forward by Parker, offside flag up against Clark. This is McMahon. And Wegerly in on Hussein, but just couldn't take the ball in his stride. Just a reminder to Liverpool and Hussein in particular not to get complacent. Here's Gillespie. McDonald to Sinton, good ball. And Hussein didn't play the ball, did he? He went straight through onto Andy Sinton, who will need attention. Hussein, who uh, was sent off at Norwich for two bookable offences on uh, against Robert Fleck. This time it's Sinton who is the player he catches, and there's no excuse for that, really. Is there, Trevor? Well, a little bit lucky not to get booked on, on that occasion, really, because uh, when you look back at the Barry Venison booking in the first half, I'm not sure that uh, that was quite as bad as that one. It was quite similar, the same, the two bookings at Norwich. In fact, uh, man going past him and, uh, you know, he, he has that tendency to go in two-footed and then brings the man down. It's certainly going to make sure that he doesn't skip by him. Well, Sinton's back on his feet. It's a free kick to QPR to be taken by Kenny Sansom. They've got all the troops up there, McDonald and Maddox. Clark. Wilkins tries to get in, but look at Ian Rush. He's got space ahead of him and Barnes to his right. And this is dangerous now because McMahon and Beardsley are also coming through ominously from deeper positions. Still Barnes. He's away from Parker and it's Barker again. So far, I would think Queen's Park Rangers' most effective player. Number eight, Simon Barker. And he tends to get stronger as matches go along. He's renowned here for his uh, lung power and his ability to last the 90 minutes at full pelt. He'll need to against McMahon, actually. This is McDonald. Now Steve Nicholl, up against Bardsley, oh he's found Beardsley, McDonald's header, Nicholl, 
Barker. Shinton. Foul by Nichols. Now the referee has gone to his notebook this time, and I think Steve Nichols is going to get booked. And it seems a silly thing to say, but I think he's almost paying for what happened a few minutes ago with Glenn Hussain. I think the referee has uh, decided to take action because there have been two fouls in quick succession, Trevor. That often happens, becomes the golden rule, that uh, two or three. And it really, as he goes in here, all right, it, it was a... I mean, he didn't really make any aim at the ball, did he? And got his on the shins. And actually seeing the replay like that, perhaps uh, he did warrant the booking rather than on the first occasion where I thought it was more clumsy than anything. So the yellow card for Steve Nicholl, 20 minutes to go. Queen's Park Rangers won, Liverpool won. Bardsley with the free kick for Rangers. Hussein heads it out to Houghton. And it's Liverpool playing on the break now and in uh, time-honoured fashion looking dangerous when they get the ball out to Barnes. Here's Whelan. It's just uh, beginning to look now as though Rangers are getting stretched. McMahon. Beardsley. Rush is coming near post. Seaman got a hand to it and it needs to be cleared by Samson. Hussein. Houghton. And Liverpool are in charge of this man in the match. Gillespie. Hussein. Swedish captain comfortable on the ball but then who isn't in this uh, setup here's Hansen oh that's good play from the back by the captain this is Nickel and there's Rush corner Danny Maddox just got to Ian Rush on the near post to prevent him sliding it into the net here's Beardsley Houghton that was deflected to corner. Well, we've said before there comes a time in a match when you have the feeling in your bones that Liverpool look like scoring, and I have to say that's been the way of it the last five minutes or so. Their supporters seem to be reflecting that at the moment. Hussein is forward for the corner. Clark heads it back to Houghton. Here's Nicol. And it's out. Great run again there, Stevie Nicholl trotting back. And uh, it is it is weird when you think of him as a natural right-footed player, how effective uh, uh, that much better he seems to be as a left-back rather than right. But uh, here we do have eventually Stevie Staunton going to come on then. Now let's see where he's going to end up. And uh, Peter Beersley coming off. Never seemed happy today. Certainly not in his wide midfield role, which in fact, uh, since John Bond, Barnes has gone up front, as the role is had to play and be interested to see as the rest of the season goes on what eventually will happen because there's a few occasions where Peter Beersley perhaps hasn't started a game or has come off in a game yes with the World Cup in mind that's a situation that will be monitored I'm sure very closely Steve Staunton's wearing 14 he's gone to left back and Steve Nicholl has moved on to the left hand side of midfield that's the way they've reorganized That was Gillespie, the other fullback now. He's wearing 12. Hussein. Houghton. Well, when Kenny Dalgleish made the first substitution, Liverpool scored within 90 seconds. We'll see if that has the same instantaneous effect. Or can Rangers pull it out of the fire after a quiet spell from their point of view? Here's Wegerly. I can see Don Howe urging them on from the bench over there. Very animated. McDonald. Looks for Clark. Nice header back. Here's Wilkins. Out to Bardsley. There could be something on here for QPR. Barker. Oof. Volleyed away by Ronnie Whelan. Sansom. Challenged by Barnes. Wegerly. Free kick given. Home supporters now hoping for something. There's McDonald. 
Clark. Wilkins. Span off the side of his foot, rather. And here's Steve Staunton. To McMahon. Parker drives it forward, Clark's on the chase behind Hansen, and Robola seemed to come a fraction late, or rather start to come and then hesitate, he's got to get back now, because Rangers with 15 minutes to go are pressing again. Here's Barker. Bardsley. This is McDonald. Bardsley again. Clark pulling away towards the far side. Gillespie had the height to meet that. Here's Sinton. Parker for Rangers. They're still lined up in the centre. McDonald and Clark are waiting. This is Wilkins, but he's driven Bardsley wide with that. Rangers now are going to have to take chances. They've pushed Kenny Sansom and Alan McDonald forward here. Bardsley, Wegerly couldn't reach it, and neither could Sansom, who'd gone into a centre-forward position. They're not really winning those balls now, and I think with, what, just under a quarter of an hour now, it's, it's very late to come on with a substitute if you leave it much longer than this. So I think uh, Mark Falco's got to get on pretty quick, because he did cause them a lot of problems in the air in that league game back in November. Meantime, it's McMahon for Liverpool. Here's Staunton. Barnes has been lively, to say the least, in that central position. He's uh, giving Rangers something to think about every time he gets the ball. Nickel, and he tries to get Nickel back in again. Good cross and Seaman there from Steve Nickel. No question now that Falco is going to come on. Sleep. Oh dear, cut out by Houghton. Yes, the Rangers attack does need freshening up, there's no question about that. Got to have a real go for it in the last few minutes uh, to prevent going back to Anfield. And that's always uh, assuming Liverpool don't score again. Here's Clark, Wegerly. I just wonder whether this referee, uh, Mr Lynch, who's taken over, is using the notebook a little more than Brian Hill would have done. Um, he's going to book Ronnie Whelan now. That's the third Liverpool player, if I'm not mistaken, to be cautioned and given the yellow card, which is unusual for Liverpool uh, with their disciplinary record. But while that's being uh, dealt with, we're seeing the back of Roy Wegerly, and for the first time in some weeks, the appearance of Mark Falco experienced striker with a good left foot and uh, he's going to come on just as Rangers prepare to take a free kick he gets a big ovation from the home crowd Ray Wilkins will take the kick Danny Maddox is forward on the far side and the header out by the captain Hansen corner to Rangers Sinton will take it. Clark facing the kicker. McDonald also in a near post position. Nichols header out. Sansom back to Sinton. Still lining up in the middle. Sansom again. Sinton. Hussein comes to meet it. Wilkins missed it completely, and that could put Liverpool away with Houghton. Barnes in the inside right position against Parker, he's beaten him, against Parker, he's beaten him too. It's a great run by John Barnes, but the third man was David Bardsley, his old Watford colleague, and he stepped right across him, and that could well have been curtains for Rangers if Barnes had got through. Here's Falco, though. McDonald. Wilkins. Clark. And it's going to come out to Sinton. Falco and Clark waiting in the centre. Sinton, no, headed away by Hussein. Good defending. McMahon. 
Well, there's a strong flow to the match now in uh, the last period. Ten and a half minutes left on the clock, and neither side here settling for the draw. Rangers can't afford to. Liverpool don't seem as though they want to. Gillespie well forward. Oh, he's got right through. And he's found Rush, and that's it. Ian Rush scores from Gary Gillespie's pass, and Paul Parker holds his head, or hangs his head, because Kenny Dalglish's team did not settle for the draw. They're in front for the first time through Ian Rush. Parker went for the tackle and missed it. Gillespie got away, McDonald tried to hold him up. Rush just came in behind him, left foot right in the corner, and Ian Rush scores 10 minutes from time, his 20th goal of the season, his 31st in the FA Cup in his career. And it puts Liverpool into a 2-1 lead, and the holders now are favourites to go to the semi-final. Here's Clark though for Rangers, can they pull it back? Bardsley. Barker's coming in, and away by McMahon. This is Sansom. Well, Gary Gillespie, one of the substitutes, coming forward with great effect there from the right-back position to make the goal. Here's Bardsley to Maddox. And now Queen's Park Rangers, who led at half-time, find themselves with only about nine minutes to save the tie. And Song Howe's team, who were so hopeful earlier, have found again that Liverpool are ominous opposition. You just never feel you've got them by the collar. And Rush, who else, strikes when it matters most? Staunton. Rangers, who haven't been beaten in an FA Cup tie here since 1980, when Watford won. That record is now threatened. And Liverpool, who've been in three of the last four finals, may find themselves now in the last four again. Handball by... Oh, it's an offside anyway. It's a free kick to Rangers. Well, there's great excitement there with around eight minutes left. Looking for Falco. Sansom. And Kenny Sansom tricks his way through. Oh, what a pity for Rangers. He couldn't have found somebody with the cross. Bardsley. Wilkins goes up. McDonald's in there now. Oh, he's, is he pulling the shirt of McMahon? Well, it's play on. Bardsley. Parker. Falco, Clark. Well, they couldn't have more players in there, but the only danger of that is that if Rangers overcommit themselves again, they're in danger of conceding as they did before because uh, Russian Barnes are still lurking upfield as Kenny Dalglish barks at his defence. Seven minutes left, Queen's Park Rangers one, Liverpool two. There's Justin Channing, the other QPR substitute. Hussein. Barker. Barker's tripped his way through for Rangers. What a brilliant goal! That's a superb effort by Simon Barker, and it's 2-2. And now it's the Liverpool supporters' turn to look solemn-faced as Simon Barker scores a fine individual goal six minutes from the end to push this cup tie to still greater heights well we were saying he was Rangers best player on the day he made the first goal and now he scored the second and proves again that for a midfield player he lusts the 90 minutes possibly as Don Howard said Simon Barker as well as any player in the country he had the legs to get right through there, and what a good, strong finish. Trevor Brooking. 
Well, a great cut tie it's been and uh, two magnificent pieces of finishing. Ian Rush just got that one chance, hit it in with his left, and there again, Simon Barker, a magnificent strike into the top corner. And could Rangers go one better and win it? McDonald coming in from the far side. Falco tries to get there as well. And we're where we were really just a few minutes ago because uh, with 10 minutes left it was 1-1 and now about five minutes later it's 2-2 here's Wilkins Parker he's had a terrific match the number eight that's a good cross too Clark is there couldn't direct the header well, it was a good chance actually to head it back across goal. Mark Falco put his hands up and he's just shouting across at Colin Clark because playing the two big lads, they're not easy to pick up. And really at the far post, he was never going to score, couldn't really get the power. So the, the way to sort of head it across the goal would have been far more dangerous. Well, there was a shot there of uh, Don Howe and uh, how strongly his team have come back because uh, so often in those situations, you find that Liverpool have killed the game off, but they didn't today. And things looking now, again, like possibly a replay at Anfield. But uh, here's McMahon. It was 3-2 in the league. It might be 3-2 today. I'm not going to say which way. Here's Whelan. Rush. And Rush again. Wilkins trying to clear on the edge of the area. And uh, Parker comes across. Stirring stuff here in West London. A fluctuating sixth round cup match. Rangers in front, Liverpool in front, and now level again. Good value for money. Here's Sanson. Barker wants more. And Ray Houghton trying to shake Barker off, but look, he's in there again. He's had a splendid afternoon and he's determined to urge Rangers on yet again. Here's Sinton to Sansom. Now Wilkins. In by Bardsley. Falco jumping, flags up on the far side. Three minutes left, free kick to Liverpool. The score 2-2. Two -two. And the finishing has been excellent, hasn't it? The Wilkins volley... The Barnes free kick, the clinical strike by Rush, and that spectacular Rangers equaliser from Simon Barker. You couldn't have asked for four better goals. McDonald. And there was an injury to the referee as well. It's been uh, packed with incident this uh, sixth round game. Barnes Parker with the challenge and you still wouldn't bet against a winning goal Gillespie's in the penalty area here for Liverpool this is Barnes cross rushes there too and Kenny Sanson with two minutes to go glad to get the ball away Are they going back to Anfield, or can somebody snatch it? Here's Houghton. Getting it back from Whelan, and look who's there again, Simon Barker. Absolutely outstanding, the number eight for Rangers. One of the best midfield performances I think we've seen on uh, Match of the Day this season, Trevor. Well, he's worked very hard, and really the icing on the cake was the goal, wasn't it? But still Liverpool press with Houghton, Barnes, and Barker's in there again, look. A minute to go, here's Barnes. Whelan. Houghton. Oh, Rush actually was diving before the ball arrived, and it was... Uh, Maddox who cleared for the corner and Rangers now have got to pull everybody back 
including Mark Falco. Ray Houghton to take the corner. We're in the last minute. It's John Barnes. Gillespie's waiting on the six-yard line. It's Houghton again. Staunton. Well, it's uh, time added on now for stoppages, but uh, Whelan's looking for Staunton. His first touch not good enough, and that may well be Liverpool's last chance of uh, winning this at the first attempt, but they're looking very much as though they'll be replaying again at Anfield as they did against Swansea and Norwich in earlier rounds, and QPR have had a replay at least one in every round. So that couldn't be another repeat performance. Only this time it'll be away, and Steve Nicholl goes down uncomfortably. That looked an awkward fall for the Scottish international. Already in injury time, Roy Evans will have to come on. It gives me a chance, Trevor, to ask you to sum up a very exciting match. Well, I think in the end, it's just as well, isn't it, that both sides get another opportunity at Anfield on Wednesday, because it has been a very topsy-turvy game, both sides looking in control at different stages. Uh, I think we should also mention old Gary Gillespie, because we said... Uh, we didn't think that he uh, would push forward in that pullback position, and there he goes. He, he created that second goal, didn't he? Uh, probably thinking about it himself. He was quite pleased with it. Set up in Russia, though, a great piece of finishing. But then uh, thought that might be the glory winner, but in fact, Simon Barker had other ideas. And really, as I say, I think a, a two-all draw is just about fair on the game's play. Now, I wonder if they could prove you wrong with this free kick. <laughs> I don't see. It's uh, Staunton who takes it. But um, it's looking, as you say, very much like a second meeting. But here's Rush. And uh, good news for Andy Roxburgh. Gillespie's uh, return to the side. And uh, Steve Nicholl got up from that injury and doesn't seem to be too uh, impaired. But here's Falco. And it's uh, a free kick for backing in. Well, stand by for the semi-final draw because... There are only a few seconds of stoppage time left here, surely, and uh, the referee who took over, Mr Lynch, brings this tie to a conclusion, or certainly the first episode, because they now go back to Anfield on Wednesday night. Exciting stuff from the time Wilkins put QPR ahead in 29 minutes. John Barnes equalised from the free kick. Ian Rush put Liverpool in front, but then this man, for me, the best player on the pitch, Simon Barker, equalised for Rangers with six minutes to go, and it finishes Queen's Park Rangers 2, the holders Liverpool 2. Well, Jim, smashing match and some super goals. Absolutely wonderful. I thought Don Howe won the tactical battle in the first half, and uh, you, Kenny Dalglish won it in the second. But it, the match and the score were shaped by brilliant individuals. Um, well, I mean, you, what can you do better than Simon Barker in one game? And John Barnes, I mean, that's good news for England. W wonderful performances all round. Splendid. It means, of course, that six clubs are involved in that uh, semi-final draw, which is upcoming now at Lancaster Gate. So let's go over there and join Bob Wilson. Well, sad to think this is the last time we'll be meeting like this uh, this season, but as Des uh, has just told you, six teams left. Let me just give you the numbers before the draw. Manchester United, six times cup winners, they're number one. Oldham or Aston Villa, who meet on Wednesday at Boundary Park, their number is number two. Crystal Palace, still to meet first division opponents in the cup this season, number three. And that leaves number four, the two teams we've just seen, Queen's Park Rangers or Liverpool. So the draw, semi-final draw of the FA Cup. Here's the chief executive of the FA, Graham Kelly. Thank you. The draw for the semi-final, the teams will be drawn by Mr Ernest Brown, the chairman of the Challenge Cup committee, and by Mr Bert Millichet, the chairman of the Football Association. And number two, Oldham Athletic or Aston Villa. Number one. We'll play Manchester United. Number three, Crystal Palace. Number four. We'll play Queen's Park Rangers or Liverpool. That concludes the draw. The ties will be played on Sunday, April the 8th. Kick off at 12 noon and 3.30. The order and the venues for the ties will be de determined and announced tomorrow. 
Well, there you have it. My first reaction there in that uh, older Maston Villa against Man United. There's uh, Paul McGrath, of course, who is at Villa. He uh, was at Man United before he went to Villa. And Andy Ritchie, the Oldham striker, of course, he uh, again is a former Manchester United player. But there it is, Oldham or Aston Villa against Manchester United, Crystal Palace versus Queen's Park Rangers or Liverpool. As Graham told you, the venues to be decided and announced tomorrow. So, back to Des at Loftus Road. Thanks very much, Bob. Let's have a little reaction to that draw now here at Loftus Road. Here's Tony Gubber. And with us in the changing room here is Ray Wilkins of Queen's Park Rangers and John Barnes of Liverpool. I suppose it's difficult to react to the draw against Crystal Palace in the semi-final until this one is settled. Yeah, very much so, Tony. We've got the unenviable task of going up to Anfield on Wednesday to take on Liverpool again. It'll be a very tough game for us, but we're still confident. We've got quite a good away record at the present time, so we keep our fingers crossed. I'm sure you'd like to have a look at your goal again, Ray. I'm not really too bothered, Tony. Yeah, you know. If I can get one on Wednesday, I'll be more, uh, more satisfied. But it's a lovely ball across for you there, which Grobelard looked as though he had and then lost. Yeah, he was always struggling. That's why I kept on running. Um, hmm. Very nice to... <laughs> that's why it's nice to score. Right? John, is there, is there that much satisfaction in that result for Liverpool, having been 2-1 up and then saw it go back to 2-2? Well, um, yeah, I mean, we haven't lost, that's the main thing, you know, and uh, we're 1-0 down, and, uh, you know, I think if we, if we didn't score when we did early on, yeah. the longer it went on with them being 1-0 up, I think we would have struggled. Sure. So, luckily, you know, we get, came back to one all and then went 2-1 up, and, uh, sure. well, you know, it's unfortunate that they... Oh, you want to look at my goal? Yeah. You want to shut up now, then? A... <laughs> OK. Here it is. <laughs> Deliberately placed? <laughs> well, I was aiming for, the, for that side of the goal. Uh, normally, I wouldn't... I wouldn't hit him that well from that far out. I, I'm normally like 20 yards is normally my limit, but uh, you know I think it was a bit of desperation stakes. So I just decided to hit it and sure. luckily it went in. And, and your thoughts for the replay on Wednesday? Well, it's, as Ray said, it's going to be a difficult match. I mean, they're hard to break down. I mean, we scored two goals against them uh, when they beat us 3 to one again today. But uh, you know they're very strong at the back and they norm don't normally give goals away. So I can see it being very tight on Wednesday, and uh, it's not a foregone conclusion by any means. Sure. And the uh, the Barker goal, Ray, which made it 2-2 for you. That, you must have been delighted to see this one go in. Yeah, very much so. We was under a bit of pressure at, the, at that time. Um, Simon did ever so well. He broke through and I, I think someone mistimed the challenge, actually. It rolled through his legs. Yeah, yeah. But Simon finished it superbly well with... Uh, there he goes, look, through his legs. And Simon, I thought in actual fact was going to be tackled there, but finished it absolutely superbly well. Smashing. Two of you. Thank, thanks very no, much indeed. Gone. No, no we've got time for that. Sorry, John. Okay. Thanks. thanks <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, John. Right, we've got to get off the air, chaps. We've got to get off the air. But it's been a super match. Who would you pick out as your outstanding player of the day? Simon Barker, uh, especially because he's not one of the renowned stars, or you know, by most people's judgment anyway, before this day. And it really was a treat to see him. His energy, apart from his ability, you know, was something to watch. He, he was going stronger, as they said, stronger at the end of the game than he was at the beginning. So uh, that performance, plus all the rest, is an afternoon that I thoroughly enjoy. Sure. <laughs> well, they do it all over again on Wednesday night. More cup action for you then in Sports Night. For up from us, cheerio. a man who Ronnie may one day want to emulate and who also has a special reason to be pleased to be here tonight. It's Ian Rush's 400th senior appearance for Liverpool and he scored 238 goals in their colours. Two more and he'll catch the club's second highest scorer ever, Gordon Hodgson, and then only Roger Hunt with 285 will be ahead of Ian in Liverpool's Hall of Fame. Well, Paul Parker, the Queen's Park Rangers captain, is hoping Rush won't add to his total tonight because Parker's still haunted by memories of the night he came here with Fulham in the Littlewoods Cup and lost 10-0. Happier memories of Anfield in this unchanged Rangers team for number five Alan MacDonald, the only survivor of the side that drew 2-2 here in a League Cup semi-final four years.